guys and welcome to another video of mine. I hope you're alright. Today we're going to be talking about preparing for the British Army's assessment centre and mainly around the two kilometre run. Okay, so how can we improve your two kilometre run? Or for those that are going through it now, I've heard it's now a bleep test. I wouldn't change the training so much, so this will um, be able to work for that as well. But before we start, how's everyone doing? I'm absolutely shattered. Uh, Hallie's decided to get up at like five in the morning now and just scream the house down. So me and Amber are absolutely shattered. So that's why uh, I will be drinking my triple nine coffee throughout. Got the extra dark roast today. Um, so really excited about that. I prefer the darker roast, but I'll let it cool down and I'll let you know what it tastes like. Yeah, great coffee company. Tea bag, coffee bag, sorry, not tea bag, coffee bags. Great for anyone in emergency services. That's why I made them anyone today. You know, you work at, uh, can't talk. You're working long hours, and you can't be like, spending all your money on uh, Costa and Starbucks. You know, when you're on um, not the exactly maximum wage. So, triple nine coffee. Make sure you check them out. But let's get into the video. So, improving on your two kilometer run or prepping for the bleep test. I get a lot of questions about this now, which is great. Um, it's really good, which means my videos are getting out there, which is what I want. I want to help you guys. Uh, but people are stuck on how to improve their kilometer run or how can they get a better time. So what you need to do is you need to put stress and stimuli on the body and you need to add in progressive overload, okay? Without stress, the body's not going to adapt, but you don't want too much stress that you're going to overtrain. What do I mean by this? I get a lot of people messaging me um, and obviously there's nothing against this. This is obviously just what they've been doing and they're just running two kilometers every day. And they're like, I'm not improving. So first of all, even if you are running two kilometers a day, are you tracking? So if you have a goal, which you all should do, is you wanna to go to the assessment center and you wanna get a set time to pass for your job role. So that's the parachute regiment. I believe it's sub 8.15. Um, for the majority of trades, like frontline, um, it's 10.15, I think there's a couple about 10.45. So if you're running two kilometers every day, uh, your goal is to get sub 10.45, 10.15, 8.15, whatever it is, are you tracking? Everyone has smartphones nowadays and majority of people have smartwatches. I've got the uh, Garmin Vivo Active 3, highly rate it. I got it for Christmas from Amber, so thank you Amber. Uh, really good, um, it allows me to see I've seen the mileage I've done, what pace I've been doing, total time, I can see my heart rate, so I can work in heart rate zones, um, all sorts, you know, it's got cycling, swimming, but we'll get onto that in a minute. Everyone has a smartphone um, phone nowadays, you can download loads of apps, you've got Strava, you've got the Under Armour one, you've got Nike's got one, there's loads of apps, there's loads of different running apps out there, and they're all pretty much free. So you can buy a phone holder for your arm, or if you don't want it in your pocket, which is a lot better, you can put headphones in and listen to some music. I just prefer my watch. But that way you're tracking your mileage and your time. The reason I prefer the watches is because if you want to progress over time, so the two kilometer best effort at the assessment center is a best effort, they more than likely won't allow you to wear watches. So it's an all out max. But if you're training for that, and you use a watch while you're training, then you can check your pace as you're going along. So that's what I do when I'm training for saying, I know if I want to sub, I don't know, I think it's sub nine minute, isn't it, on a mile and a half on the old British Army um, fitness assessment, sub nine minutes is six, six minute mile pace. So I know if I'm always running six minute miles or quicker, then I'm gonna come in sub nine. So when I'm training, I can, I can look at my watch and I'm like, right, sub six, and your body, will get used to that sort of running pace. You, you know what pace, you know what stride you've got to take to do that. And then if you're not hitting that pace, so say you do want to sub whatever for the two kilometer run and you're tracking and you're not hitting that pace, you then know you need to add intensity or volume throughout your sessions from going on. If you're just running two kilometers every day, five days a week, and that's the only training you're doing and you're not tracking, and you're just all you're doing is just watching your time when you get to the end then you don't know if you're adding the right stress or stimuli or any progressive overload each week. So, keep yourself a watch. Highly rate it. Garmin Vivo Active Freeze. There's loads of Garmin ones out there. I really rate the Garmin's. Apple Watches do them now. Samsung, I think, have got them. Oh, there's hundreds. There's hundreds out there. Fitbit now, I think, do ones like this. 
So there's many out there that you can do, um, but definitely get yourself a watch. So that's first of all, okay? We need to add stress and stimuli for the body to adapt, okay? But you don't want too much stress and stimuli that you overtrain. So if you do start feeling like you're overtraining, or I say about every six weeks, I always add in a recovery deload week um, for myself and my clients. So just ensure you do that. But the other tools that you've got out there. So, if you want to become better at the two kilometer run, right, all you gotta do is just get out and run. You gotta add targeted stress to your heart and lungs, okay, the cardiovascular system. So, yes, run two kilometer run, but increase that distance every now and then. Make it a little bit harder for yourself. So instead of doing a two kilometer best effort, why not do a 2.4 like the old test used to be? Another one that I used to do is, I used to run three mile and a half, so you can do it with the two kilometers, and I get my clients on the Battle Fitness Academy to do this. So you run a two kilometer best effort, you have two minutes rest, you run another two kilometers best effort, two minutes rest, and another two kilometers best effort, um, and that's it. So every time you're still trying to beat the time that you've done before. Trust me, it's a really hard workout, um, and it's a great way for improving your run. Instead of just doing that, just go out for a longer run. Okay, mix it up. If you're going to do two kilometers every day, it's just going to get boring. So go out, you know, if you're not very good at running, start off, I don't know, running 10, 15 minutes a time, or instead of doing time, you could do a distance. So go and run a mile, and then every week, add a little bit on. It could be 0.25 of a mile, it could be half a mile. I recommend half a mile. Nice little bit of um, a jump. So every week, next week, run a mile and a half. Next week run two miles, next week run two and a half until you get a good um, distance. Say when you get to four, five, six miles, you can then start increasing the pace. Or you could do that with time. So you could go the first week run 10 minutes, then 15, 20, 25, 30. And then when you get to sort of a limit where you think, right, that's okay, that's cool. I'm running 45 minutes straight now. Now I can start working on the speed and increasing the intensity. So mix it up. So you could do one shorter distance run a week, one longer run a distance a week. And then you can chuck in some HIIT workout, some sort of uh, circuit or other cardio um, tools that you've got out there. Remember, you've got cycling. Get out and go cycling for a few hours. Uh, when this situation's calmed down, swimming. Um, remember, these are low-impact exercises as well, so these are going to help prevent any injuries, especially on your lower limbs. You know, you haven't got to go running all day, every day um, to get better. Cardio um, is basically just raising your heart rate. So just find something that's gonna raise your heart rate. You know, 20, 30 minute HIIT workout is gonna be great. I do them a lot now and I find that my fitness improves a lot. And it's also gonna help build lean mass, um, which is gonna make you stronger, more conditioned, uh, and make you more ready for when you join phase one. So there's loads of tools that you can use out there. You know, just don't, just don't think you gotta go on a two kilometer run every day. But if you are gonna do that, find ways how you can progress it, okay? If you're not progressing it, like I said, if you're not increasing the intensity, the volume, um, or anything like that, then you're not gonna adapt and you're not gonna become better. I hope that helps. Get out, I would say one short run a week, one long run a week, really start building on the endurance, get the mileage in your legs, and then a couple of workouts, full body, upper body, lower body, depending on how you wanna do it. Start increasing on your strength, Get a bit of conditioning on the body, okay, um, and it's going to help. And remember to add in recovery and deload weeks, roughly, I'd say every six to seven weeks. All you're going to do on that then is just lower the in intensity and volume. So if you're training six times a week, I would say only train like three times a week, and the intensity and the volume is going to be a lot lower. So it's not going to be as hard or as, as taxing on the body as what you would do on your normal weeks. Once that week's finished, back into week one again, and then you go through your plan again for six, seven weeks, smash it, increase in the intensity and volume throughout the six, seven weeks, get to the delay recovery week, and then um, you just basically repeat, uh, repeat that process. So that's it really. Um, I hope that's helped. Remember, you need to add stress and stimuli to the body with progressive overload every week, okay? Add in small little inc increments, okay? Like, for example, if you, get, if you want to improve on your bench, just every week add a 1.25 or a 2.5 kilogram plate either side, so you're, you're progressing it, so your body then adapts, goes through that process, becomes stronger, um, and then that mutation, sort of like adaptions, happens. So, 
I hope that's helped. You know, good luck at your assessment centre. I believe this will help for the bleep test as well. Um, but yeah, hope you enjoyed the video. Give us a thumbs up if you did, and I'll see you soon.